Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a black-white knight's deck featuring all the different knight tribal synergies. So let's dive right into it here, starting out with our 1-drops, where we've got the full 4 copies of Dauntless Bodyguard, 1 mana for a 2-1 knight, and as a bodyguard enters the battlefield we can choose another creature we control, and at any point sacrifice a bodyguard to give the chosen creature indestructible until end of turn. So just a nice play on turn 1 to apply a bit of early pressure, and still a relevant top deck later in the game since we can protect our best creature in play. Then at 2 mana we've got Knight of Grace and Knight of Malice, Knight of Grace being a 2 mana 2-2 two -two with first strike and hexproof from black, so it cannot be targeted by black spells or abilities the opponent controls, and then Knight of Grace gets plus 1 plus 0 as long as any player controls a black permanent, and then Knight of Malice is kind of the reverse Knight of Grace, having hexproof from white and getting plus 1 plus 0 as long as any player controls a white permanent, so they also play nicely with each other. And then we also have two copies of Cast Down as cheap interactive removal, destroying target a non-legendary creature at instant speed. Then at 3 mana we've got the full 4 copies of Midnight Reaper, 3 mana for a 3-2 knight, and whenever a non-token creature we control dies, Midnight Reaper deals 1 damage to us and we draw a card. So nice insurance against sweeper effects, at least as long as that sweeper effect is something like a Kaya's Wrath, doesn't work as nicely against a Cry of the Carnarium, which is very effective against our deck and against Midnight Reaper in particular, since when our creatures get exiled we don't get to draw a card with the Midnight Reaper. So that's something to keep in mind, and also has good synergy with our Dauntless Bodyguard, since if we sack the Bodyguard, then we get to draw a card if we have a Midnight Reaper in play. Then we also have two copies of Radiant Destiny, three mana enchantment with Ascent, so if we control ten or more permanents we gain a city's blessing until the end of the game, and as a Radiant Destiny enters the battlefield we have to choose a creature type, which in our case is going to be Knight, and creatures we control of the chosen type get plus one plus one, and as long as we have the city's blessing they also have Vigilance, which is a nice little bonus. And then of course we've got the full four copies of History Benalia, great in any deck, but especially in this one. On the first two chapters we get to make a 2-2 knight token with Vigilance, and on the third chapter all our knights we control get plus 2 plus 1 until end of turn. And then finally our last 3-drop is one copy of Mortify, as more interaction, destroying target creature or enchantment at instant speed. One omission you might have noticed is that we're not playing Banalish Marshal. The triple white mana cost is kind of prohibitive. We could still try and fit in Banalish Marshal if we replace some of the swamps in our deck with Unclaimed Territory, but of course if we add more Unclaimed Territory scudding swamps, it's more difficult to cast our black interactive spells like Cast Down and Mortify, but if that's a trade-off you want to make, you could replace uh, some swamps with Unclaimed Territories to fit in Banalish Marshal, maybe cutting some of the other three drops instead but uh, I do like the Midnight Reaper giving us a bit of late game against the more controlling decks, whereas Banalish Marshal gets swept up by Achaia's Wrath. Of course, when Cry of the Carnarium gets added to the equation, it becomes a little fuzzier, but uh, that's where I ended up. Then at 4 mana we've got two copies of Valiant Knight, another Anthem effect for our knights, giving them plus one plus one, and for 5 mana we can give our knights a double strike until end of turn, which is also a very powerful ability. Then we also have two copies of Ariel, a 4 mana 4-4 four four legendary knight with Vigilance, and for 3 mana and tapping Ariel we get to make a 2-2 two -two knight creature token with Vigilance, and for a black mana tapping Ariel and also tapping X untapped knights we control, we get to destroy target creature with power X or less, so do keep in mind we also have to tap Ariel to use the second ability, so we do need quite a few knights before we can kill something substantial, but still a very powerful ability if there's ever a boar stall, and we can start killing the opponent's creatures one by one. And also keep in mind that you can attack with Ariel and then still use the ability before our opponent can declare blockers. So for example you can attack with a whole bunch of knights including Ariel and then still use the black ability tapping a bunch of your knights especially if they also have vigilance we can still attack with them and then tap them with the black ability and then take out an opposing blocker before they get a chance to block. You might have to turn on full control before you can do that but it is definitely possible. And then we also have two copies of Ajani, Adversary of Tyrants, as a powerful Planeswalker that fits right into this deck. Since we have some very relevant 2-drops to get back with the minus 2 ability, we can get back Bodyguard, Knight of Grace or Knight of Malice, which are all excellent targets. And then the plus 1 ability to put plus 1 plus 1 counters on our creatures also excels when you combine it with First Strike that we have on a lot of our knights. And then the minus 7 ultimate ability is also game winning. And then last but not least, on the 5 drops we've got 2 copies of Vona, Butcher of Magan, 5 mana for a 4-4, a legendary Vampire Knight with Vigilance and a Lifelink. 
and we can tap Vona and pay 7 life to destroy target a non-land permanent, and we can only activate this during our turn. So the same goes with Vona as with Ariel, we can attack with Vona and then use the ability to tap her and pay 7 life to destroy target non-land permanent before the opponent gets a chance to block, so that can also come up. And finally we have two copies of Vanquisher's Banner, we choose Knight as it enters the battlefield and then all our Knights get plus one plus one, and whenever we cast a Knight, it doesn't even have to resolve in the face of a counterspell, we get to draw a card, which is also great in the grindier matchups. And then our mana base is very straightforward, 12 planes, a single Memorial to Folly for the late game, getting back one of our creatures, 4 swamps, the full 4 godless shrines and the full 4 isolated chapels. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand, especially if we can pick up one or two extra lands. This hand's going to be quite powerful. And I will lead with the turn 1 bodyguard. Alright, Golgari Guildgate, so maybe a blank green midrange deck. Let's take two, and I think we just played a Knight of Malice for now. I guess there's an argument for playing the Knight of Grace instead of the Knight of Malice, in case uh, our opponent has something like a cast down or Moment of Craving, which uh, can of course target the Knight of Malice, but can target Knight of Grace. But if we want to play History and we drew a third land, then we could get in more damage by playing the Knight of Malice here. Alright, I'm fine trading Bodyguard for Lanor Elves. Opponent takes it. And we'll play Knight of Grace. Alright, not being able to play History on 3 is definitely a bummer, but uh, we might still be okay, depending on what they do. Could be a Chupacabra taking out Knight of Malice, but the Knight of Grace can still attack into it. Instead it's going to be a Jade Light Ranger. Reveals Incubation Druid, goes to the graveyard and picks up a forest, so we can still easily attack into it with our first ranking Knights. And a bodyguard can get in there too, if we want to, and I think that's fine. And then we'll play a Hisra Banalia. Opponent takes it. All the way to 5. Alright, let's see what our plan is to handle this board. Opponent has 5 mana, they could play Vivian, but then they would be dead on board. So they really need something like Wild Growth Walker into an Explore creature. Or multiple removal spells. So maybe a Vraska's Contempt on Knight of Malice here. That's one way to survive. We picked up another History, which is pretty strong. Still happy to trade Bodyguard for Lanor Elves here, since that delays a potential Find Finality. Ooh, Spore Swarm, that's unexpected. Alright. They get a good block on the Bodyguard. And then some trades and some Chum blocks, that's fine. Our opponent's keeping the Lanor Elves, so not sure if we should play around a Find Finality. But uh, History still makes a second token with a second chapter, so even if our opponent does have a Find Finality and wipes the board, we still get one Knight token out of the deal, so I think that's reasonable. And hopefully we can find a land soon for a Jani, since that's also more insurance against any sweep effect. Although our opponent appears to be on a more token-heavy build, so don't necessarily expect something like a Find Finality. Chupacabra takes out Knight of Malice. History Benalia triggers. Alright, let's get in there. Opponent's in Shumblock mode. And uh, scoops it up. Alright, well, double Hystro Banalia, even though we couldn't play it on turn 3, still very powerful. Alright, we're on the draw with a very good hand. Turn 2, a Knight of Malice, into History, into hopefully a Jani. Opponent with Izzet Guildgate, so it could be a Gates deck or it could be an Izzet deck. Alright, a Gruel Guildgate, so Gates deck 
is looking likely, and yeah, that could be a rough matchup. The combination of sweeper effects like Gates of Blaze, followed by big threats like Gate Colossus and Gatebreaker Ram, could be hard to deal with. A Lava Coil, Exiles and Knight, so we can't even get it back with a Jani. We're still just gonna play Histro Benalia here. Midnight Reaper doesn't trigger off of our tokens from Histro Benalia dying, so that's the only drawback. And a Guild Summit from the opponents, drawing them a card. Alright, so your opponent had a decent start. Removal into some life gain and Guild Summit. I think we are just gonna jam a Jani. And the one sad thing about playing a Jani here is that uh, if our opponent does have a Gates Ablaze, our creatures aren't out of range. But, uh,. At least we're not playing an extra creature into a sweeper effect. So we'll see if our opponent has and gates a blaze here. Gate Colossus instead. That's arguably worse. This would be a good time to pick up a removal spell. Alright, so what's our plan here? Don't have any great attacks into the Gate Colossus. Can play a Midnight Reaper and then chum block Gate Colossus for a turn. Try and get our way up to an ultimate on the Jani. That could be reasonable. I think we play Midnight Reaper. And then we'll keep pumping our knights. Especially if our opponent has another lava coil, there's no real point in pumping the Midnight Reaper. Could of course try and double block Gate Colossus. Opponent could just have a Gates Ablaze, and then we don't get to block, we lose our Ajani. Yeah, this is gonna be a rough one. It's just a Lava Coil on the Midnight Reaper. So Ajani ultimates at 7. So I could see just double blocking Gate Colossus. Hope they don't play a Ram or another Gate Colossus. And then we buy ourselves enough time to maybe get up to ultimate. We could also chum block with 1. Could also let a Jani die and then play Radiant Destiny, hit them for 10. Yeah, this is a, a tough one. Opponent's got 5 gates in play, so they can play another 3 mana Gate Colossus. They have the mana for Gatebreaker Ram. I think we just try and trade and then hope they don't have another Colossus or Ram. And then hopefully we can get up to ultimate with a Jani. It's not even guaranteed to, to be enough. They could easily still beat ultimate, but yeah, there's a Gatebreaker Ram. And a bodyguard's not gonna cut it. Yeah, we needed some more interaction in this matchup for their big creatures. But in general, I think we're probably unfavored. The combination of powerful card draw with Guild Summit and the sweeper effects and then the big creatures on top make it a pretty tough one for us. Alright, so um, let's play Radiant Destiny. Name Knights. If we did have a cast down or a mortify, then next turn we get to ultimate Jani. And we get to make a bunch of 1-1 tokens. But even against uh, Gate Colossus, those tokens don't line up all that well. So I could still easily see them beating us once we get a, an Ajani ultimate off. Ram goes after Jani, that'll work. No real point in saving him. But uh, at this point I think we're dead. Maybe something like a Vona can save us, since at 5 toughness, thanks to Radiant Destiny, it survives Lava Coil, Archway Angel, puts the opponent up to 32, Vanquisher's Banner, name a Knight, and we'll pass the turn. So yeah, it's pretty much Vona or Bust at this point. And as our life total starts dwindling, Vona might not even be able to be activated more than once. Double Gate Colossus. And another Ram. Alright. Let's play Bodyguard, see what we can draw. Alright, let's keep stringing together those chum blockers. 
cast down. Yeah, that's what we needed earlier. Yeah, I don't think we can survive here. Can jump block two Colossi, cast down a ram, still take six trample and uh, the angel kills us. All right, GG's. Well, that was a rough one. All right, we're on the play with a pretty pricey hand, lots of fours and fives. Um, on the draw, this hand might be a bit better since we're more likely to draw additional lands, but as is, I think I'm still going to risk it just because we have the potential of Knight into History, which is a decent opener. Turn on the flowers up against the tokens deck. So against the tokens deck, we're going to try and kind of stall out the board and somehow go bigger than them. Thanks for Anthem effects from cards like Valiant Knight. We did pick up the history, that's nice. Our first strike creatures are also pretty good against their tokens. What we don't want to see is a board stall that ends up with our opponent casting something like a flourish to just go over the top. But we should be able to keep pace in the early game. And then uh, kind of depends who draws more Anthem effects in the late game. I think we're fine trading a Knight token for uh, any of the opponent's tokens. Opponent takes it. Play a Reaper. And next turn we'll get a nice big swing in with uh, History. And we're kind of hoping for a land so we can play the Valiant Knight to get an additional plus one plus one. Venerated Loxon doesn't look all that amazing in the face of history. Opponent gives us a GG. And yeah, they're indeed dead on board. So opponent had kind of a slower start and we had a history on three. And yeah, that was the game. All right, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. No turn two play but uh, enough lands that we should be able to get to 4 mana reliably. And then we've got some powerful plays lined up. Turn 1 Pelt Collectors up against maybe a mono green Stompy deck. They might be able to go bigger than us pretty quickly. So our game plan is kind of going to be to assemble a bunch of first ranking creatures to discourage any attacks from larger creatures from the opponent. So far we don't have any first ranking creatures. Vona could come in handy for sure, taking out some of their larger creatures. It's even unclear whether we should attack with a bodyguard here since we're trading 2 damage for 2 damage. Opponent's gonna stay back, alright. So they are respecting our aggression as well. Did pick up a Knight of Grace, so that's our first first ranking creature. I think we just play Reaper and then attack with a Bodyguard. And if they want to block with a Harpooner, that's fine by me. To grow the Pelt Collector. We get to draw our card. Since we do want to hit our land drops. Alright, that's good. Could be a Steel Leaf Champion, so now... Belt Collector can attack past our Midnight Reaper. Ariel could be good too. At the very least it just trades for a Steel Leaf Champion, which at this point I'll take. Although that will grow the Pelt Collector once again. So it could also just trade for the Pelt Collector itself. Another Steel Leaf, so Pelt Collector is a 5-5 anyway. Alright, let's uh, trade for Ariel, take 5. And then hope to pick up some more first ranking Knights. Adventure Impulse. Don't have a ton of life to work with, opponent picked up Galta. Yikes. So, what's our game plan? We need to get rid of Galta if we play Vona. 
That's one potential way to do it, but of course uh, we don't have the life to pay. Reaper can chum block champion, we'll lose one. We're still taking trample damage from Pelt Collector, which is going to be a 6-6 after they play a Galta. Yeah, Galta's probably going to be a little bit much for us to handle. If we had more life to work with, then Vona would be a decent way to do it. I guess we can hope something weird happens. But uh, as I see it, we're pretty dead. Maybe we can hope to top deck a Mortify to kill Galta. But we're not going to have the life. So jumping the champion doesn't even work because uh, we take one from the Reaper dying and then six from the Pelt Collector. So I guess we'll double block the Steel Leaf. Opponent gets to take out Vona. We gain four, take six. And then maybe if we string together some removal. Alright, there's a Mortify, that's what we needed. Might not be enough, but it's definitely where we need to start. So if we play the Knight of Grace, we'll have two blockers. We have to Mortify Galta before damage, so the Pelt Collector grows up to a 7-7. Seven, seven. And tramples over for three, so we're taking three and then the Midnight Reaper causes us to die. So it actually doesn't do it here, sadly. Had we double blocked Pelt Collector last turn, would we have survived? Interesting, our opponent only attacks with Galta, well that's... Gives us the opportunity to maybe survive. Nullhide Ferox. Alright. I'll take it. We might be able to live after all. So we can go History plus Valiant Knight, which puts up the most power and toughness. Or we could go History plus Ajani. I think I like History plus Valiant Knight. And we're just desperately hanging on. Hope that the opponent's out of action and that we can slowly take over the late game. Opponent sends in both. Alright, so let's figure this one out. So we can just trade everything for the opponent's stuff. And we would go to one from the Midnight Reaper triggers. So we need to put seven toughness in front of Pelt Collector, otherwise... Uh, we die from the Midnight Reaper triggers, from the three non-tokens that die. So, if we block like this, we don't take any trample, we lose three down to one, we draw three cards and everything trades. I think that's acceptable. Don't immediately see a better way to block. Well, for once, the token not making us draw a card with Midnight Reaper is an advantage. Three lands is not what we wanted to see. Untamed Kavu with Kicker, 5-5 five, five Trampler. Yeah, that uh, might just be enough here. We can play a Johnny, get back a Knight of Grace. But we don't have the mana to also play a Vanquisher's Banner. And then the one trample from the Untamed Cavo kills us. Alright, I mean, I guess we'll still go for it. No friend of mine fights if they attack us, we're taking one trample, and that's game. Yep. Alright. Well, that was a close one. Almost managed to claw our way back into it. Alright, we're on the play, and the sand seems totally fine. Bodyguard into Knight into History. 
and then Vanquisher's Banner as kind of the cherry on top. Our hands may be a little bit weak to a red aggressive deck, because we're taking four damage from our mana base, and our creatures still die to shock and goblin chain warder. Instead it's a turn one of Let's get in there. A red green. A rekindling Phoenix is definitely a card that we are gonna struggle with since we don't have any exile effects. I did have some Conclave Tribunals in the deck, but uh, they eventually got cut. Since unlike something like White Weenie, we don't have as many cheap creatures to help us convoke. Second Lunar Elves and Pelt Collector. Alright, I'm still fine attacking with a Bodyguard here. Opponent trades with Alf. Play History. And hope not to face Rekindling Phoenix. It's gonna be a Stomping Ground tapped into a Zurta Goblin. Alright, that's fine. Belt Collector at 2 2. Doesn't attack. A Radiant Destiny to pick up. Probably worth it to play a Jani here. Just gonna plus for now. And I don't really feel compelled to trade our knights when we're about to hit the third chapter. Also reasonable to just minus and get back Knight of Miles there. Goblin gets in there. I think we let the Jani take a hit. I will not be moved. Pick up a fifth land, so it's time for Vanquisher's Banner. Naming knights. And get a nice juicy attack in. Also, one of the great reasons to play this deck is that you get the encouragement from Ajani's voice lines. Which cannot be understated. Opponents down to four. Growth Chamber Guardian's a good one. So at this point we're just hoping to top deck into as many knights as possible and draw cards with banner. So we'll play Radiant Destiny, name knights. So right now these are 6-6, six, six. if we make them 7-7 seven, seven, do our attacks get any better? Our opponent does have a double block with a 4-4 four, four and a 3-3, three, three, so in that sense making these 7-7 seven, seven means they at least trade there. So I think it's worth it to plus instead of get back Knight of Miles here. Deliver us to victory. And we'll attack. Opponent does go for the double block. And a chum block, that's fine. Alright, opponent gets a big pelt collector. But not bigger than our knight. They get to start chaining together a bunch of Growth Chamber Guardians. But hopefully we draw some Knights to overwhelm them in cards with the banner. That's a good start. So do we minus to get a Knight of Malice? Or do we plus so they both trade? I think we plus. Force the double block essentially. And I'll play my land since you never know how many knights we might string together with banner. So our opponent's in chum block mode here, facing our Knight of Malice. Still have Anjani at our side as well as banner, so we're definitely favored, but uh, you never know. So Knight of Malice can get in there, has Vigilance thanks to Radiant Destiny, so still plays defense nicely. And then I think we'll get back another Knight with a Jani. Opponent 
Quote on Trump's with war balls. Yeah, I think this matchup is fine for us as long as we dodge a card like Rekindling Phoenix. And yep, opponent packs it up. Sweet. Alright, we're on the draw and this hand seems okay. We don't have a double white source for the history yet. But uh, we do have quite a few white sources in the deck that we could draw. And in the meantime, we get to play Knight of Malice into Radiant Destiny into Ariel, which isn't bad either. Turn one mountain. Alright. Against the deck playing Shock, there's always the argument of playing Radiant Destiny before playing out something like a Knight of Malice. But uh, since we have a second one, we'll just run one out there and see if it dies. Firebrand goes face to enable spectacle for line of the stage, which finds Gitu, Lava Runner, and Mountain. Whenever you're playing Light of the Stage, don't play your land before casting it if you can, because you never know if you hit two lands with it, and then you can play them in the two consecutive turns instead of uh, missing out on a, a land. We did pick up the planes in the meantime, so we get to play Hisra Banalia. And I think I will attack. Pyromancer does attack. Opponent revealed Colossus with a second light of the stage last turn, so blocking seems pretty bad here, so we'll just take it. Opponent catches in Colossus, hits us for 6, grows Teamkin. Alright, Mortify was a decent pickup, gives us a way to interact with the Steamkin. So we could just play Ariel and then next turn go Knight plus Mortify. Seems okay. And I'm fine if they want to trade Knight token for Steamkin. So let's get in there. Opponent takes it. And next turn we're going to be able to deal a pretty big chunk of damage. They both attack. If they have another Collision Colossus, then they could trample over Ariel without losing the Steamkin. So that could also be pretty bad. But then the Steamkin still has a bunch of damage marked on it, so they can't sack it this turn without losing it. And we still prevent 4 damage by blocking with Ariel. So I think that's fine. And I'm not going to cash in the Knights for the Pyromancer, I don't think. Alright, another Colossus, makes sense. So Steam can survive, so we take a bunch of damage. Let's see what their follow-up is here. Lightning Strike to the face. Uh-oh, are we just dead here? Opponent sacrifices Steamkin for mana. Is it to play another Lightning Strike or Wizard's Lightning? Nope, just a Goblin Chain Whirler. Alright, so we're still alive and Mortify should do the trick here. So we'll just Mortify the Chain Whirler and hit them for 13. Yeah, not used to playing against the Collision Colossus version of the Mono Red deck. So not sure if our blocks were ideal, but uh, it worked out in the end. Sweet, all right, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.